Citywide lockdowns hit China's top financial hub. 26 million people in Shanghai are now subject to mass testing for COVID-19, while concerns over the shutdown rise following a number of apparent hospital failings. The second of two black boxes found after last week's devastating plane crash in China. But a curiously short report has some questioning if there's a cover-up effort in play. China rebukes a warning from Washington about helping Russia evade sanctions. But do Beijing's actions match its words? A new report says capital outflow in China has reached unprecedented levels. Was the rise spurred on by Russia's invasion? And for those watching our full episode, America's major defense partner in Asia finds itself in a sticky situation. Putin's war on Ukraine has complicated the country's relations with China, Russia and the U.S. all at once. Welcome to China In Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. China's top financial hub is going under new lockdown orders. The city of Shanghai instructed its 26 million residents to stay home on Monday. Even though the partial lockdown that was active before had already caused a number of issues. Let's take a closer look. Starting Monday, Shanghai is going under a two-stage lockdown, and all 26 million of its residents are required to get virus tested. The announcement was first revealed on Sunday. It marks the biggest pandemic-related disruption to hit the city in recent months as officials scramble to contain surging cases. The sudden lockdown will split the city in two for the next nine days. One half will be under lockdown from Monday to Friday, while the other will stay home from Friday to next Tuesday. The split will allow for staggered mass testing during this time. Those who wish to leave the city will also have to show a negative test result taken within the previous 48 hours. Before the lockdown, residents stockpiled groceries and other essential goods. One shopper at a Shanghai wet market explained there was nothing left to buy and that locals are at a loss for what to do. Besides the stay-at-home order, Shanghai authorities also suspended work at firms and factories except those offering public services or supplying food. Some hospitals had already halted services before the order as they released staff to assist with mass testing. Shanghai has largely been more flexible during the pandemic than other Chinese cities. As tens of millions of people in China have been under lockdown, Shanghai only shut down parts of the city. Worth noting, Disney's theme park in Shanghai was closed last week. Even still, the partial lockdown had already caused much confusion. According to residents, a couple of patients with kidney diseases were rejected for treatment at hospitals. Because of it, they weren't able to get dialysis and are in critical condition. The lockdown order indicates a turnaround for Shanghai's authorities, which repeatedly denied the city would be locked down. What's more, two people who claimed Shanghai would be shuttered have been detained over what police described as spreading rumors. Reports of a new law strike Shanghai. A nurse there has died of asthma after local hospitals shut down emergency services due to China's COVID-19 policy. Even the hospital she worked for rejected her. Last Wednesday, the nurse tried to seek medical treatment for her asthma, but no ambulance could be sent in time. Her family then drove her to several hospitals, only to be told emergency services weren't operating due to the pandemic. After several attempts, one hospital finally took her in, but it was too late. She died later that day. Among the hospitals that turned her away was her employer, Shanghai East Hospital. Two days later, the hospital issued a statement on its website confirming her death. The incident triggered a heated discussion on Chinese social media platform Weibo. One netizen wrote, COVID-19 patients need treatment. Don't asthma patients need treatment? Don't cancer patients need treatment? Don't other patients need treatment? They are also patients. They are also suffering from diseases, and they are also lives. The nurse's death is one of a number of similar incidents. In January, two pregnant women from Xi'an City lost their unborn babies after getting rejected by hospitals for treatment. The healthcare facilities were closed at the time due to the pandemic. Before her loss, one of the women waited outside a hospital building, waiting several hours for treatment while bleeding. 
An update on the China Eastern Airlines flight crash. Chinese officials say the second of two black boxes has been located. And all 132 people on board have been confirmed dead. Authorities have identified 120 of the victims through DNA analysis. The flight data recorder was discovered about five feet underground, some 130 feet away from the crash site. Although partially damaged, its data storage unit appeared to be in good condition and has been sent to Beijing for analysis. Investigators there are now decoding another black box, the cockpit voice recorder found earlier last week. Flight MU-5735 suddenly went into a near vertical dive mid-flight before crashing in southern China's Guangxi province. Obtaining data from its two recorders is considered key to understanding the cause of the accident. Flight data recorders store crucial details including airspeed, altitude, direction and engine power. They can also record the position of wing flaps and whether the plane was flying by autopilot. Before the announcement was made on Sunday, discussion online left many netizens questioning if Chinese authorities were being fully transparent. On Friday, Chinese newspaper Civil Aviation News reported that the second black box had been found. The report contained just two words, is true. Alongside the short text, seven reporters' names were listed as authors. But the seemingly odd report was only available for half an hour before it was deleted. Chinese state-run media immediately published another report, saying the second black box hadn't yet been found. Wang Dan was one of the leaders of the 1989 Beijing student pro-democracy movement. He believes the report indicates something going on behind the scenes, and that the seven reporters named were trying to counter the Chinese regime's censorship and even a possible cover-up. He brought up a question in a social media post, asking people to consider whether to believe Chinese authorities or the reporters who operate under political pressure. China's ambassador to the U.S. is hitting back at Washington's warning. The U.S. has repeatedly warned that if China helps Russia evade American sanctions, there will be consequences. And here's the Chinese ambassador Qing Gan's take. He said China hopes to maintain normal cooperation with Russia adding that China firmly rejects any threat of unilateral sanction or long-arm jurisdiction from the U.S. side and will respond with resolute measures to defend our legitimate rights and interests. Qing's remark comes after a series of warnings from the U.S. about the cost of aiding Russia. The world is watching China's next steps closely as Putin presses forward with his war on Ukraine. Should they provide military or other assistance uh, that, of course, violates sanctions or, uh, or supports the war effort, uh, that there will be uh, significant consequences. But in terms of what those specifics look like, we would coordinate with our partners and allies to make that determination. Uh, we have communicated very clearly to Beijing uh, that we won't stand by uh, if um, Uh, We will not allow any country uh, to compensate Russia uh, for its losses. To ease the suffering and pain. President Biden also um, commented on the situation. uh, China understands that uh, its economic future is much more closely tied to the West uh, than it is to Russia. And so uh, uh, I'm hopeful that he, uh, he does not get engaged. As for the Chinese ambassador, even though he took a hard stance against warnings from the U.S., he appeared to soften his tone several days later. Back in February, China and Russia published a joint statement together, saying their friendship has no limits. But Ambassador Qin clarified the statement later. Qing said even though China and Russia's cooperation has no forbidden areas, it does have a bottom line. He explained that the bottom line falls along the principles of the United Nations Charter and basic norms of international law and international relations. Following Washington's warnings, Reuters reported a Chinese state-controlled oil giant put a major investment deal in Russia on hold. That oil giant is Sinopec, the largest oil refiner in Asia. Citing unnamed sources, the report says the Chinese regime is pressing companies to be careful with investments in Russia due to concerns that they may violate Western sanctions. 
Earlier this month, two China-based banks also suspended their business with Russia. Amid China's response to Russia's invasion of Ukraine and a volatile virus situation, are Western investors starting to rethink investing in China? A new report shows capital flowing out of the country at a rapid pace. NTD's Don Ma has the story. We've been pulling money out of China on a large scale since Russia attacked Ukraine. This suggests investors may be seeing China in a new light after how Beijing responded to the invasion. But a new IIF report also says it's premature to draw any definitive conclusions. Political scientist and economic analyst Ethan Yang says the outflow is due to a number of factors, including China's response to the Russian invasion. Investors don't like it when the regulatory environment uh, continues to change at a moment's notice. And there's been a lot more uh, crackdowns on capital, uh, crackdowns on the stock market, crackdown on large companies, right? So investors are starting to realize that The Chinese government that was very friendly towards companies, very easygoing when it comes to allowing investment in the past, is no longer doing that. And not only are they not doing that, but now they're supporting countries like Russia, for example, in Ukraine. Other than capital outflow, businesses could be leaving too. A new survey by the European Chamber of Commerce in Hong Kong found that due to the city's current virus restrictions, 50 percent of the city's businesses are thinking about relocating in the next year either partially or completely. It used to be this massive um, like GDP producer, and now it's more just a small component of the Chinese economy. Um, they're going to have to probably transition to something else besides global finance, or it'll just be a shell of itself, which again would be extremely sad. What about American businesses in mainland China? 75% say they will not increase investment in China. This is according to a recent survey by the American Chamber of Commerce in China. In Xinjiang, there's uh, allegations of slave labor, and so the U.S. has proceeded to ban cotton from Xinjiang, right? So you don't want to be a a clothing manufacturer uh, with imports coming from Xinjiang. Uh, So basically, almost any investment you make in China could be subject to some sort of sanctions, some sort of restrictions someday, right? So that's kind of like the the anxiety that comes out of this geopolitical tension. The survey found that more than 50 percent of businesses say U.S.-China tensions is the biggest obstacle to their business. Don Ma. And TD News. And that's all for today's China in Focus on YouTube. We are now sharing a shortened version of our program on YouTube. That's after it being demonetized for a year. Full episodes can be watched on our partner platform, Epoch TV. To sign up for a 14 day free trial, please click the link down below. Thanks for watching China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer, and see you tomorrow.